All right. Usually I say good afternoon, but good evening. <laughs> Welcome to the signing day uh, press conference. For starters, let's uh, congratulate uh, Coach Tang and Coach Mitty. Uh, great non-conference seasons and uh, excited for both programs. Off to great starts and can't wait to, uh, to watch them at Bramlage uh, uh, come uh, January when we get back into town. But uh, fun to see both programs playing so well. Uh, we signed 26 guys today. Uh, great job by our coaching staff, by our support staff, by our recruiting staff, uh, led by Taylor Bratt, uh, guys that we've been on for an awful long time. Uh, we, we had a true cycle with these guys where we were around these guys an awful lot. Um, and we had, uh, of the 26 guys, 24 guys came to game day uh, sometime either this year or last year. And I, I still think that's uh, our best sell is getting these uh, – prospects and their families to come to a game at the Bill and see the, the great crowd here. Um, we had uh, 10 kids come to our camp um, this past summer and then four uh, players that we saw at satellite camps. And uh, obviously for us, it's it starts with the state of Kansas. We signed six kids out of the state of Kansas that uh, we're tremendously excited about. And, um, you know, Jordan Allen, Will Anxio, uh, Camden Beebe, Andre Davis, Wesley Fair, and Avery Johnson. Uh, those six guys from Kansas uh, have been here countless times uh, to our campus and um, excited about those guys from the state. And, and, and we can talk about guys individually from other states and, uh, it was really important for us, and I think you guys see that. We uh, found some defensive backs and found some linebackers. Uh, those two needs, because we were graduating so many guys um, in the secondary at linebacker and then uh, wide receiver. Um, with our top three guys being uh, fifth-year seniors, it was really important for us to uh, keep trying to find some receivers as well. So let's uh, fire away at some questions. In a depth standpoint, was this one of the more special years that you can remember in the state of Kansas? Yeah, it's been the best since I have been here um, in 2019 uh, with the amount of depth and the amount of quality guys. And um, we have some other kids that are going to be walking on to our program from the state as well that uh, we're tremendously excited about as well. You probably recruited longer than anyone. Was Asa Newsom from the state of Iowa, where you're from? Just what is it about him that made the two or three years that you invested in him worth it? Uh, versatility. Uh, he's a, a tremendous athlete. He's going to play linebacker here. He's got great size. He's got great range. He's a track kid as well, so he's got tremendous seat, speed. Uh, comes from a phenomenal family, uh, an athletic family. His dad's a track coach at uh, Wartburg, and I've known his, his dad for a while. And, and uh, Waverly's probably 15, 20 miles from where I grew up, and we played Waverly a lot when I was in high school, so know a lot of people from that area. And uh, Ace is going to be a great fit here. Avery Johnson is probably, you know, everyone knows the most in this class. What stood about out about him when you recruited him? Maybe not the player, but the person. Yeah, I, how competitive he is. I, I think that's the first thing. He's not going to lose in anything. Uh, he's going to get mad if he gets beaten checkers or tic-tac-toe or anything else. Just how competitive he is. Uh, and I was able to see a game live this year, which was which was fun. Got to see those guys play derby. Um, and he's just uh, he's a winner. And he makes everybody around him better uh, with, the teammate, with his teammates and his tremendous leader as well. You mentioned his competitive nature. Did he kind of apply that to the recruiting process too? He seemed to get involved in trying to get guys here. Boy, absolutely. And I think that was really important uh, for him to uh, be one of the leaders in the class. And, and I know that Co Colin Klein has done a phenomenal job recruiting him. And uh, he, between Colin and Taylor and other people just continuing to try to get him to help uh, in this recruiting process. And you know, whether it was social media or contacting guys or, or seeing guys at games because he made it to so many football games of ours this year. He was a huge help, and uh, he wanted to do that. He wanted to help, and he helped land some really good kids that uh, he's going to play with for four or five years. There are always some signing day surprises, but you added some guys today that hadn't prior committed. How, how good was that to kind of finish this class off with that, sir? Yeah, um, we had been working on a number of guys. Uh, Asa was one of them. Uh, that we just found out about, I think it was Tuesday night, uh, as far as his commitment. And um, yeah, yeah, there's a handful of those guys that we've been recruiting for a while. Um, you know, we just had the, the Colorado tight end Andrew Metzger visit for the first time uh, with us. He'd been here for a game, but for the first time with us. And 
um, you know, we, we were able to stay on guys, and that's a credit to our, our recruiting staff and uh, uh, the coaches and support staff for continuing to reach out to these guys. We we have a great support staff, you know, our QCs and our analysts, uh, as well as the coaches and, and then Taylor staff that uh, the constant letters – you know, there's so much about handwritten letters and sending information and staying in contact with these guys. And um, it's about building relationships. And I know our staff's done a tremendous job of that. Um, I forgot my other question. Oh, I'm going to give you a headache here. Okay. Uh, so you're at close to 85 right now. You've still got some guys that might come back. Yeah. Uh, I mean, where are you at? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I, I don't know. Um, that's what uh, we're trying to figure out every day. Um, we're close to that number, uh, but we also know that it's just kind of ever, ever evolving. You know, um, we will probably have a couple more guys that uh, um, unexpectedly or expectantly uh, leave the program. Uh, we're still actively recruiting for sure, uh, and um, you know, it, it's it's ever changing. Uh, your roster is, and so. There's some positions that we have to still try to look for, uh, and uh, we'll continue to do that. So what is it that stands out to you most about Avery Johnson as a quarterback, just strictly as an on-field player? A uh, couple things. One, he's got really good arm talent, and that's the first thing we look for is really good arm talent. He sees the field really well, and he, he, can, you know, he can throw it from the hash to the sideline, and he throws the vertical ball exceptionally well. Uh, and then um, – uh, the athleticism, the ability to uh, make plays with his feet. And uh, I think uh, many of us saw the clip in the U.S. Army All-American game where he, you know, makes three three or four guys miss and outruns everybody. Um, that's pretty special. Uh, you don't see that all the time. You, that's God given the ability to just roll and run like he does. But you combine that athleticism with the fact that he's got tremendous arm talent and uh, – we're excited about his future. You think Camden BB has a shot to be as good as his brother? Oh, I, you bet. He's another competitor. And uh, uh, I, we're so happy to keep uh, uh, the BB clan going and getting another uh, BB in, in Camden. And we talked about that. Camden's going to write his own ticket, his, his own path, and have his own story. And this is not Cooper's little brother. This is going to be Camden and Camden's story. And uh, I'm excited to see where he goes because he's – He's had a really good career uh, at the high school level, and I know he's going to come in here and work extremely hard. Tell me what you like most about your two other Wichita guys, Will and Wesley. Um, let's see. We had uh, both of them at camp, um, both really athletic. Uh, I like Will as a receiver, uh, as a tight end position. Plus, he's really physical. He's going to be a really big kid. I mean, he's going to put some weight on. He's playing hoops right now, uh, but um, watching him grow and develop, uh, he's going to be an outstanding tight end that's going to be an inline guy that can block as well as go get the football. And then uh, uh, Wesley's got great range as a safety, and he's got really good ball skills, and, and he'll strike you. He played some quarterback, too. So, I mean, he's a really talented athlete on both sides of the ball, but uh, we'll play him at safety and, and uh, Will at, at tight end. I was going to address linebackers specifically, but with this second year in the 3-3-5, Everywhere, have you been able to address the position needs that you need? Yeah, we're starting to recruit more, being that we've been in this for two years, uh, specific guys to, to a position, um, you know, a body type, so to speak. And uh, uh, we're fortunate. A kid like Jake Clifton, I think, can play all three. A kid like Toby probably can play all three. Uh, Austin Romaine's probably more of a true Mike we think Kirksey can be a Mike or a Will. Asa can probably be a Will or a Sam. Uh, Rex Van Wy is the one that we're excited about because he might be able to play all three. He's, he's long. He's really a young player. He's just played a year of football at the collegiate level. And then Colin Dunn would be probably more of a Sam backer, um, uh, more on the edge. But, uh, you know, the more those those players can learn and play and the more things they can do uh, to be able to – you know, have versatility to play all three positions, it's going to help. Is there one in particular in this class that would slide into that Mike position? You know, um, probably Kirksey. 
but um, but we'll see. Uh, you know, he'll be here in the spring. A couple of those guys will. Rex Van Wyl will be here in the spring. Austin Romaine, Colin Dunn. I think Ace is the only one that's he's going to finish up and run track uh, this spring, which I'm happy for him. But the rest of those guys will be here, so they'll be in spring ball. With Avery Johnson now being a Wildcat, it's the first time in a long time that the number one player in Kansas is coming to Kansas State. And they usually go to you know big-name schools. Isn't Kansas State a big-name school? It is now. Yes. <laughs> It's been there for a while, of it's course. Right. But uh... <laughs> no, but we're excited about that. No question. We we need to keep the best players in state, and uh, um, I don't know how those rankings go, but he was one of the top players for sure, and be able to get him um, to stay in state uh, once again. Credit Colin Klein, um, the relationship that that CK and Avery have built, uh, and then um, when you get uh, somebody of the magnitude of, of Avery. Uh, to come from in-state, and then some of the other guys kind of gravitate to that. I think it's important, uh, and, and it helped us land a bunch of guys. But, uh, you know, especially when it's a quarterback, I think that's really important that you keep those uh, uh, best players in your in your state. And you've been very blessed with transfers in the secondary. I wonder if you could go more into Will Lee. And... Yeah, um, he's at Iowa Western. We know the coaching staff at Iowa Western. He has great length, kind of like Julius. Not quite that that size yet, but uh, has a chance to get there. Um, real good ball skills. He he will really hit you. Um, you know, won the national championship in the junior college. Went to get some really good wide receivers from Hutch and did a tremendous job against those guys. He's another guy that will be here at semester. Uh, Coach Malone did a phenomenal job uh, from you know a long time ago recruiting him. And uh, we're really fortunate that uh, he stuck with us because I know he had a lot of opportunities late, but this was the best um, uh, for him, best fit. And, you know, we lose a couple corners back there, so he's going to have a great opportunity to compete early. Wide receiver was a big need that you guys filled. Can you just kind of give us a rundown of the, the four guys you got on there? Yeah, um, kind of all over the map. Great versatility in, in Jace Brown. Uh, Tremendous speed kid that can be a slot or, or a outside Z receiver. Andre Davis, uh, big, tall, long, rangy, great hands. Uh, could probably play either the X or Z spot. Trey Spivey can play the X or Z spot. Another 6'3", uh, 6'4", six, six, plus kid that uh, really can stretch the field. And then uh, Wesley Watson, I think, is the guy probably that could play all three. He could be uh, an F where uh, we had Phillip to an X or a Z where Cade and, and Malik were at. And, um, you know, for us it was really important to be able to stockpile that position again um, with uh, not just all one type of player, but uh, having that uh, ability to play a few different spots and uh, giving us some size. And that's, you know, getting uh, Andre and Trey uh, getting big, tall receivers is going to be a, a benefit to our guys. And then Joe Jackson seems like one of the more underrated guys on this list coming out of Florida. He seems yeah, exciting. Yeah, um, you watch his film, and he is a physical runner. And he is fast, and he is fearless. Uh, great competitor. He has really good hands. Um, probably one of the more fun guys uh, that uh, we've had tons of interaction with. And he's been up here. Uh, a number of times, which is a credit to he and his family for not just coming up here once, but coming up here multiple times to make sure this was the right fit. He hit it off with Coach Anderson. I know he hit it off and enjoyed visiting with Deuce Vaughn. Um, but Joe's Joe's got a chance now to play early because he's he's an exciting kid that is a speed kid, but is an explosive guy in between the tackles too. Is Jack Fabris what we would probably expect for a son of John Fabris? I bet so. Yeah, uh, for starters, he's a great athlete. He's a phenomenal baseball player, too. Um, but uh, we're excited because you can tell he's a coach's kid when you get him on the board and you talk ball with him like we did this summer. He just gets the game. Uh, he's He's got good size to him. Um, he tackles really well, good ball skills. Uh, and, you know, that's the thing that can get you on the field at the secondary spot or the linebacker spot the quickest is just knowing what you're doing. And that's sometimes the hardest thing. Uh, but when you have a background and a pedigree like he does of understanding the game, we're excited uh, about getting Jack here. He'll be, a, he'll be an impact for us. For a guy like Cheedy, is it, is it fun to have those kinds of players where you don't necessarily know where their body's going to take them yet? Yeah, Cheedy's a 
great athlete, uh, very physical, uh, got great length, um, went up to the Twin Cities in Minneapolis. Coach Anderson and I have a lot of different friends up there. He's one from the, one of the best high schools up there in Eden Prairie where Mike Grant's at. And um, we're excited for Chidi because you're right, he, his body's going to get bigger and, and stronger. And um, he, he played – I know he's playing basketball a little bit uh, during the winter, and I think he had 28 points and didn't miss a shot and stuff. So, uh, you know, he's athletic and he can move. And so we're excited about getting him here. You mentioned some ongoing needs. What other positions would you like to still address? Well, we're still looking probably for a, another, an older defensive lineman, if we could, um, just a D tackle. You know, you lose D hands, you lose uh, Eli and stuff. We, we we're looking probably there. Um, you know, we'll still continue to look uh, at the skill position. You know, whether that's a, at the safety corner spot or. Uh, running back spot. I mean, we still have to look, but we'd still uh, we feel good about where we where we are with our roster, and so it's going to have to be the right fit for us um, with whomever that may be. And uh, we're not in a hurry on that right now. We're going to try to shut it down and take a few days to relax and enjoy ourselves a little bit, and then we got a pretty good ball game coming up in another week. Um, running back, you mentioned that. Is that something you want to address with another high school player or a transfer type guy? We're, we're keeping our options open there. Um, you know, this bull prep's been important for us to see the depth we have uh, really behind DJ because I think DJ's a, a tremendous, tremendous football player. Uh, and Deuce hasn't given us his final um, decision on what he's going to do. Um, and so we're really trying to evaluate all those other guys that uh, aren't true freshmen but are, are a little bit in that, uh, whether it was a transfer or a – um, you know, uh, Jordan Shippers to any of those other guys just to see where we're at. But uh, we'll keep our options open there. How ridiculously competitive will that quarterback room be? You know, it's going to be fun uh, to have all those guys here this spring, um, to have a number of wide receivers coming back or or joining us. It will be a lot of fun. Um, I know that uh, you know, CK is excited about seeing what some of these younger players can do. Uh, we, we've seen what Will can do. Now let now let's let's see what Rubes can do. Let's see what Lara can do. Uh, let's see what Avery can do. It's going to be fun to be able to have two fields so that we can actually throw the ball vertically uh, and not stop practice in the middle of it and um, have those two fields where we have the new indoor and the new outdoor out there will be uh, really refreshing to be able to air the ball out. It says thirteen states represented the most states from one signing class since at least nineteen ninety seven. You cast. A wide net. That's the K State brand has got to be really up there right now. Yeah, uh, it really is. Uh, I think winning helps, <laughs> you know. Uh, and many of these guys, obviously, we've been on for a while, but you know, we had good success at the end of last season, uh, winning the the Texas Bowl in a in a prime time game when nothing else was on. So I think a lot of guys were able to, to see that game and, and see the following we have. We've got great fan support on, at, at home or on the road. And then getting out with our coaches to some satellites, we were able to see some guys. Um, and, uh, you know, the K-State name is getting bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger. And then, you know, you just look at what we did this year with some of the wins we had, especially on the road. And then, uh, you know, to cap it off, whatever it was, Two plus weeks before signing day with the Big 12 championship, um, you know, some validation there with some guys that were maybe unsure of if this is the place I was going to go, or yep, I'm going to the right spot. I'm going to the Big 12 champs, and um, there's a there's sustainability there uh, with uh, the kids that we have returning, with the guys we have coming in, with the coaching staff. Um, it's it's an upward trend that we're excited about.